How's it going guys? What I wanted to do in this video is to talk about some of the uh, initial struggles that I had replacing an NAE with an SNE and I'm wanting to record this now just kind of as a reference uh, for any of you guys out there that are uh, going to be faced with such a situation that we recently faced and just kind of help you guys out. I know that there is always some various struggles uh, whenever we do a, uh, a device replacement such as this. So I wanted to put this out there and uh, just hoping that it would help some of you guys out. It's some information that I wish I had known prior to doing this. Uh, now one of the first things that you're going to want to do is to upgrade the database within SCT. I've got a video about that, so I would suggest that you go back and check that out. Now, what we want to do after we get the device out, the new device, the SNE, and we unbox it, we will typically set that device up with a switch and a couple of network cables and then connect that to our laptop to where we can work with it. And one thing that you're going to want to do is just uh, basically you're going to want to have a shortcut to your network connections settings. And of course, the way you find that, of course, is going to be in a control panel, network and internet, and then network connections. And turn off your Wi Fi. Of course, I'm not, I don't have anything connected right now, so I'm just going to be showing you just a little bit of a demonstration. Inside your Ethernet connection, uh, you will go down to the Internet Protocol. Uh, version 4, TCP, all that kind of stuff. What you want to make sure that you do is when you initially start this, you want to make sure that you select obtain an IP address automatically. Currently, I have uh, hard-coded an IP address into this device where I was working on a particular device. Uh, this is uh, one that we were working with. Uh, but in order to find the particular device, the new device, I want to select Obtain IP Address Automatically. Once I do that, I will hit the OK button. I will hit OK again. And at that time, I will be able to discover the device. Now, I ran into some challenges when I did not have the uh, DHCP set to enable on my laptop where SCT was not able to discover it. Of course, I assume at this point you do not have the new SNE powered up. Uh, what you will do after you get your laptop set to DHCP enable, which is what you just seen me do, you will then open up SCT Pro. SCT Pro has got a lot of the tools that we've used previously uh, basically built into this system. Of course, we have the option here for device discovery. Make sure again that you have your laptop set to DHCP enable because my own experience when I would have an IP address hard coded into my laptop, I could not discover the device. Uh, some of you guys may have a little bit better luck with that. I did not. I'm just basing this on my experiences. I'm going to go into the device discovery and it's going to pull me into this window here. At this point, what I would do is power up the SNE. I would have a power supply set up. I would have it connected to my switch and as well as have my laptop connected to the switch. And then as I power it up, I would hit the discover button. Eventually, it will populate an IP address for the particular device. Okay, it's going to populate that IP address in this window. Okay, after it populates that IP address, what you will be able to do is go back into your uh, network settings and at that point, go back to where we were at previously, the internet protocol, just double click into it. At that point, you will then enter an IP address that is within the same range of your device, of that device. Now, just to give you a little bit better understanding of what I'm talking about, 
if I were to look at a device on the system, I'm just going to grab one at random, uh, one that we have, uh, just I hit this, the network tab, and you can see, for example, this particular device address is going to be 10.5.132.13. What I would do is on that last number, you know, right there, where it's at 13, is I would put that at like 141511, just something very close. If you do not do that, you will not be able to gain access to that particular device. Okay, this is very similar to an NAE. If you're replacing an NAE, uh, you, you know the process of that. Of course, your IP mask and all of that you would need to be entered as well. There are some differences with the SNEs, and that's why I wanted to make this video while it is still fresh on my mind. Okay, after you have entered the or changed your computer's IP address to the same subnet range as the device, you do have the option right here to launch directly into your device. Okay, of course, I don't have anything populated here, so it's not going to let me. But it's basically view live data. Once you click on this, it will come up with the option of view live data, and that is what you would select. You can also take that IP address and enter it into your launcher tool to be able to gain access to that device. Once you gain access to that device, there are a few things that uh, are different between an SNE and an NAE. And one of those things is typically with an NAE, the first thing that we would do is point the NAE to the site director. Okay, that's a very common step for most people that will replace uh, an NAE. Uh, you know where it is, you just basically populate that in your system. Uh, another difference between an NAE and an SNE is typically an SNE sees itself by default as the site director. When you first get into that device, you're going to see something very similar to this. Okay, It thinks that it is the site director. And in order for us to be able to uh, pair this with our actual site driver, site director. If you have a server in there, there's some things that you're going to have to change. Uh, this is a, where it gets quite interesting. Depending on your the firewalls of your system of your network, I know it's kind of a uh, it's always a battle with IT on some things, and that's where part of my battle was as well. Uh, you may not be able to pair this from the start. Okay, if you're trying to get your database into the device you may run into some issues. Now, when I tried to change the site director and enter the IP address for that site director, I got a site director login screen uh, on the NAE. Okay, this is what it showed me. Basically, it asked for a username and a password for the site director. And this is kind of where a little bit of struggle began for us. It is very possible that it could just be a uh, network thing, some of our network security and that sort of thing, but it is a struggle that we did have. Now, once I got uh, to this point, I was not able to proceed with changing the site director. Uh, once you, if you enter the wrong information, it's basically going to give you this error right here. So how do we overcome that? Well, what we did is I simply changed uh, the name of the device. I also changed the IP address of that device and hard-coded it. I set the DHCP enable to false, and I hard-coded the IP address of the device I was replacing into the new device. That is something that, uh, you know, I do not want to be in a situation where I am chasing IP addresses. So putting a known IP address in this device while I'm working with it is something that is very useful. Okay, you, you know, try to save yourself as much trouble as possible. So, you, and, and there again, you guys, you know how you would do that. You would basically go into the uh, IP address. You would turn DHCP to false, and then, of course, hard code in that IP address. 
once I got the name as well as the IP address into the device, I tried to download the uh, device from my laptop initially. I keep a copy of SCT on my laptop and I was unable to do so. The struggle there, I believe, was IT related. Uh, we do not have uh, some of the network configurations on our machines. There are some firewalls and things like that that are configured on our machines as an organization that seem to be preventing that. What it would do is get to about a 25% download. It would basically come up saying initializing load, get to 25% and then time out. Okay, so I had uh, no way of being able to get the database from my laptop into that into the new device, the new SNE. So the way that I overcame that was simply to use our server. Once I got the IP address and everything hard-coded into the new device, uh, with it set to false, uh, from our server, I was able to push the database into the new device. And at that point, I was able to pair the um, device with the server as well. Uh, could not load it from my laptop, could not download the database from my laptop, but I could from directly from the server. Uh, that goes back to some of the differences in configuration, uh, the firewalls and things like that, which we cannot change on our machines. And once I got the database downloaded into the machine into the new SNE, it did take twice to get the device to pair with the server. However, as as uh, as I did download that database, it did have the site director and everything in the device at that point. And, you know, I had no problem from then on out once I got the device uh, downloaded from our server and got it paired, it is functioning as normal. And, you know, there has been no issues with it currently. And guys, uh, you know, this is just some of the initial struggles that I've had with getting an SNE, uh, upgrading a NAE to an SNE, and I wanted to record this while it was still fresh on my mind. That way, just kind of put that out there. If any of you guys are running into some of the same struggles, maybe this is something that can be useful to you. Uh, you know, from my laptop, I have been able to load NAEs. But with the newer version of uh, Metasys, it is my understanding that there are some different port configurations and things like that. With the newer version, some of the communication is different. So that is one of the reasons why it appeared to have issues uh, trying to load the database into an SNE from my laptop. Even though I was able to load an NAE from my laptop, I was not able to load an SNE due to the port differences. Now, I've got a meeting coming up with a uh, one of the tech guys from Johnson Controls, and he is uh, going to hopefully be able to answer some questions for me regarding that. But guys, this is just some information that I wanted to get out there to you all. Hopefully, it's something that will help you in your uh, process of replacing an NAE with an SNE. It is something that it's not very difficult. It can be a little bit aggravating, some of the struggles that you can run into, and that's why I wanted to put this out there to kind of help minimize that for you guys. Guys, hope you liked the video. I will be doing an, another video on this to where I'm actually going to be doing one of these live. I'm going to try to capture as much of that as possible to give you guys a better understanding, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, guys, if this is helpful to you, uh, let me know down in the comments below. If you've got any questions, let me know those as well. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Uh, that way, you know, we can just kind of get some of that information out there to try to make your life a little easier. I know exactly what it is sitting in a mechanical room, scratching your head, trying to figure out what went wrong. I've been there many times myself. Guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the links down in the description. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, visit my website at systemcontroltech.net, and we will see you next time.